actually, it's totally hot. <laughs> Watch out, Goombas, here comes Matteo. Actually, come to think of it, this is probably a lot more humane than stomping on their heads, too. I've always felt bad about crushing another living creature to death with my own body weight. Yahoo! Here we go! Ah! <laughs> the pain! The pain! <laughs> I am in agony! Excruciating agony! <laughs> this has to be the worst way to die! Why? Why would you do this? Why? Why couldn't I die like my brother Tony? He was crushed in a single instant! His life ended with no suffering! <laughs> Mamma mia! Internet, welcome to Game Theory, the show that's like a super mushroom for your brain, making it grow to twice the size, which also means that it'd be so big that it barely fit into your skull anymore. Oh God, what have I done? So many big brained, tiny skulled theorists out there. Anyway, Super Mario 3D World just made its way to the Nintendo Switch. I gotta say it's great news because it's truly one of the Wii U's best titles, which come to think of it ain't as high of praise as I originally thought, considering the top 10 list for that system includes a remake from two generations before, a cross-platform indie game, a less good version of a Switch game, and the original tech demo that it came packaged with. Not a lot of competition there. Anyway, it's a great Mario game, and it would be a shame for it to remain trapped on a system that nobody bothered to own. It's also great news because it gives me an excuse to talk about the popular plumber and one of gaming's most iconic power-ups, the Fire Flower. This one's been around since the original Super Mario Brothers, and has made an appearance in basically every Mario game since. Even Super Mario Odyssey, which replaced the traditional Mario power-ups with hat powers still managed to squeeze in a cameo appearance for the Fire Flower, with Peach showing up wearing a traditional kimono in Bowser's Japanese-inspired fortress decorated with, you guessed it, the Fire Flower. Anyway, we all know how this works, right? Needs no introduction, considering it is the most iconic power-up of all time. I feel like that's not even overstating it. Mario and Fire Flower. I mean, name a more iconic duo. You can't, but you can try down in the comments below. With one touch, it turns Mario's outfit red and white while granting him the all-important ability to throw fireballs. Simple as that, clear as crystal. Or is it? I literally just said we all know how this works, but do we? Have we stopped to question what exactly is going on here? What are Mario's fireballs exactly? I mean, they can't just be pure flame. After all, flames are just burning gas, and as such, we'd expect hot gas to rise, but what Mario is using is affected by gravity. These things are being pulled downward, and not just being pulled downward, but also bouncing off the ground. It's a detail that we all take for granted because we've seen it going on for decades, but any explanation for what he's actually using here has to account for that bouncing. And then you got the fact that despite supposedly being balls of fire, Mario still seems perfectly capable of using them underwater. So this has to be some sort of special flame. In short, we have three things to answer if we want to address this properly. One, what can get set on fire. Two, bounce off the ground. And three, also burn underwater. What exactly are Mario's fireballs? It's a simple question with a not-so-simple answer, and that makes it the perfect topic for game theory. Now, this isn't the first time that I've tried to tackle the topic of Mario's fireballs. Back in 2017, I did a collab with Grant Thompson, the king of random, to solve how fireballs could burn underwater. I count myself extremely fortunate to have had the opportunity to spend that time with him because two years ago, he tragically passed away. Much, much too soon. Rest in peace, buddy. You are remembered. Now, on the beach that day, what Grant wanted to test was thermite, a flammable metal powder that's used in welding. Scale of danger from 1 to 10, what would you list this as? I'm gonna put this up there as a solid 10. Wow! That is some quality YouTube science thing going on. We packed tennis balls full of thermite and dropped them underwater to see if they'd continue to burn. I love the smell of thermite in the afternoon! Matt Pat is a natural thermite grenade maker. Let's not spread the word about that one too widely, shall we? <laughs> and the conclusion was that, yeah, thermite did manage to continue burning while 
submerged in water, giving us underwater fireballs. See, if I was a Koopa, I would totally be afraid of that. I'm a human and I'm totally afraid of that, so good job, Mario. However, while it did prove the point of underwater fire, I wasn't convinced that we had solved what Mario's fireballs actually were. I mean, one, I don't think Mario's carrying around extra tennis balls in his overall pockets just to load up with flammable powder, but more importantly, the thermite reaction leaves behind molten iron, and I, I, I just don't see a lot of slag metal laying around the Mushroom Kingdom after I'm done rampaging through it with my fireballs of death, which means today I want to look for an alternate solution. To start with, we need to establish one thing. Mario's fireballs aren't just pure fire. In fact, technically they can't be pure fire because, well, fire isn't actually a thing. Fire is a chemical reaction that produces, among other things, a flame, which is the hot gas that you probably mentally picture when you hear the word fire. Now, why bother to make the distinction between fire and flame? Well, we know that a pure flame wouldn't look like what we see Mario tossing. Pure hot gas wouldn't bounce along the ground like a rubber ball. Obviously, Mario is throwing some kind of chemical cocktail that's able to sustain an ongoing combustion reaction. It's more of a flaming projectile. Thus, Mario's fireball wouldn't be a ball of fire so much as it is a ball on fire. Of course, that still leaves us with the obvious question, a ball of what? What does it take to create a flaming, bouncing underwater projectile? Well, it all comes down to having the ingredients needed to sustain a fire. If you've ever paid attention during Smokey the Bear's safety lessons, or you watched our episode about fire Pokemon from four years ago, you might remember the concept of the fire triangle, which is a simple model of the three basic ingredients that you need to sustain a fire. A fire needs one, heat, two, fuel, and three, an oxidizing agent. Technically, the fire triangle recently poke evolved into a fire triforce, but uh, for today, the triangle is gonna be enough. Anyway, without any of these three ingredients, the chemical reaction just can't continue. For instance, 99% of the time, the oxidizing agent is just oxygen, air. We happen to live on a planet with a lot of oxygen just floating around all the time, in case you haven't noticed, and fire really appreciates that fact. But if you want to extinguish a fire, you can smother it with a blanket. Covering the fire deprives it of oxygen. Thus, the triangle is broken and fire can't survive. This is also how most fire extinguishers work. They spray carbon dioxide, which surrounds the fire, effectively smothering it. Or, you know, you could always rely on your good old pal H2O, just drop the flaming object into a bucket of water and bam! No oxygen, which means no combustion reaction, which means no more flames. Except, clearly Mario's fireballs do work underwater, which leaves us with the big question of how? Or as one popular Japanese VTuber put it, Water in the fire! Why? Water in the fire! Why? Well, like I said, 99% of the time, oxygen is the oxidizing agent for a fire, which leaves 1% of the time when it's not, and Mario's fireballs apparently fall into that 1%. A rare edge case. A situation where you use an oxidizing agent other than O2 to create your fire. Now, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to figure this stuff out, but it would help, because this is one of the big problems that actual rocket scientists have to deal with. Think about it. In space, there's no air. That means that in space, there's no oxygen floating around to be a part of your combustion reaction. So how do you get a combustion reaction in the vacuum of space? Well, one answer is to bring along your own oxygen in liquid form. That's what was used by the Aerojet Rocketdyne RS-25 engine that was used on the NASA space shuttle. Though, that probably isn't going to work as well for Mario's purposes, considering that liquid oxygen needs to be stored at very, 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 very low temperatures. We're talking in the minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit, or negative 240 Celsius range. In fact, the RS-25 is actually classified as a cryogenic rocket engine because its propellants are stored at such low temperatures. Now, I know Mario can handle the cold. He does tend to run through icy landscapes in just his overalls. But carrying sub-zero cryogenic ice balls in his pants only to ignite them later doesn't make a whole lot of sense. But really, any source of oxygen will do. For instance, the reason thermite powder was able to burn underwater in that King of Random experiment was that it's made of aluminum powder and iron oxide. The aluminum metal acts as the fuel, and the iron oxide, as you might be able to tell from the word oxide, provides oxygen. Just like OxyClean is powered by the air you breathe, activated by the water that you and I drink. See how you have some oxygen O's floating around near the edges of its chemical structure? Well, that right there is why it's your oxidizing agent. Fire is basically just a super fast version of a type of reaction that exists everywhere in our world. Something called a reduction oxidation 
oxidation reaction, or redox reaction for short. Oxidation is the loss of electrons, and reduction, confusingly enough, is the gaining of electrons. It's called reduction because you're gaining electrons which are negatively charged, so you're losing charge, thus reduction. Anyway, it's just a fancy way of saying electron swap. And if you look at what oxygen is actually doing here, its role is to accept electrons from the fuel. So in our quest to figure out what's going on with Mario's fireballs, all we need is something that has a similar chemical composition to what we saw in the thermite's iron oxide. Examples of oxidizing agents that have been used in rockets include nitrogen tetroxide, which was used by the Apollo 11 lunar module, and ammonium perchlorate, which is frequently used in rocket boosters. See all those nice juicy O's waiting around the edges of the chemical structure waiting to accept electrons? And you see, it's that second one, the ammonium perchlorate, that I want to focus on, because unlike O2 oxygen, which is a gas at room temperature, ammonium perchlorate is a solid. And that's good, because remember the three things that we need to make Mario's fireballs happen. It needs to be able to bounce, which means that it needs to be affected by gravity, and, you know, solids tend to bounce better than gases. Being a solid also means that we can mix it with the fuel source. We can create a chemical cocktail that provides both the fuel source and the oxidizing agent that we need to make combustion happen all in one neat little package, just like we're seeing happen with Mario's fireballs. For the fuel source, most rockets just use powdered aluminum, the same kind of stuff that I talked about with the thermite, so we're gonna go with that. But there's still one missing piece here. We need a way for all of it to stick together, and it's here that Mario's fireballs really deliver the surprise. It all comes down to rubber. Yeah, silicon rubber. No joke, here on YouTube you can find people doing DIY make your own rocket fuel videos, where they bind aluminum powder and ammonium perchlorate, which again, remember, is the same stuff that NASA is using in their actual rocket boosters. And they're combining these things with tubes of silicone rubber that you can find at Home Depot. Rubber. As in, bouncy rubber. And by the way, the idea of using rubber or something similar as a binding agent for rocket fuel isn't just something that YouTubers are doing. In 2013, private space company Virgin Galactic announced that the latest tests of their suborbital space vehicle were being done with fuel that used a key ingredient for synthetic rubber. Virgin Galactic's own press releases describe the fuel as, quote, rubber-like. So what are Mario's fireballs exactly? Well, they're quite literally an advanced form of rocket fuel. Rubbery, bouncy rocket fuel. Aluminum powder plus ammonium perchlorate plus a little bit of silicone rubber to bind it all together. That is, in my estimation, the only way to explain how they're able to burn continuously, even when underwater or in the vacuum-like conditions of Super Mario Galaxy. It's also an explanation for why they bounce like a rubber ball when he throws them. It also also explains why enemies die on contact, considering that solid rocket boosters can reach temperatures of more than 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 2,760 degrees Celsius. Sorry, Goomba, that's gonna leave a mark. Which leaves the only thing unexplained in this theory as why it all comes from a flower. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. Thanks for watching. You know what's not rocket science? Saving money with the sponsor for today's episode, Honey. Theorists, these days I like to stay cozy on the couch as I do most of my shopping online. And while I'm browsing for matching PJs for me and the fam's next movie night, Honey is there to one-up my shopping experience. Honey is the definitive free browser extension that you can get on your computer in just two easy clicks. As you browse one of Honey's 30,000 supported sites for the perfect Mario onesie to wear to your next rewatch of the 90s classic, it is scouring the internet for promo codes to save you money and automatically test them out at checkout. Once Honey finds you a deal, all you have to do is click apply coupons and watch as your total drops faster than a Yoshi being sacrificed by Mario. Lately, Steph and I have been watching through our favorite cringe classics, which goes well with pizza. And pizza goes well with Honey, the browser extension. We've been able to stuff ourselves full of stuffed crust, knowing that Honey was saving us over $5 on each and every one of our dinners. But you don't have to take my word for it. Take it from some of these reviews by you theorists at home who found Honey through us. Quote from one of those. I discovered Honey through MatPat, and I use it for everything. Flights, cosplay, supplies, G Fuel, and just generic stuff. I couldn't recommend this extension anymore. Or the much more to-the-point review, if you ain't using Honey, you got to be dumb. So, don't be dumb. Join your fellow theorists who together have saved over $4 million with Honey by going to joinhoney.com slash MatPat. That's joinhoney.com slash M-A-T-P-A-T, -A -T, or the link's in the top line of the description. That way they know I'm the one who sent you. That way I can read off your review and customer savings as a part of a future ad spot. One final thank you to Honey for sponsoring this episode, and I'll see you all next week.